Today, we discuss all things archery mods. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. One of the most powerful builds in Seven Days to Die is the Agility build, and the archery weapons are a main part of this build. So today, we're going to take a look at what modifications are available for the archery weapons. We'll look at which modifications go with which weapon, and exactly what each modification does. Because although the archery weapons are pretty awesome, the modifications can make them even better. So let's head inside and take a look at the modifications available for archery weapons. Now before we take a look at the individual modifications themselves, let's start off by taking a look at the modifying screen. This screen will give you a whole bunch of information. The first thing I want to point out is the cosmetic slot, this slot right here. Every weapon in Seven Days to Die has a cosmetic slot. It is indicated by the little paint can icon right here, and this allows you to install one of the cosmetic dyes into your weapon and dye in it a different color. Another important section of this modifying screen is the top left section here. This tells you the stats of the weapon that you are modifying. Now, as you add on modifications to the weapon, these stats will change, and you can actually witness in real time what that modification will do to the stats of your weapon. And of course, one of the most important sections of this menu is the actual modifier section. The modifiers are indicated by this little double gear icon right here, and that is the way that you differentiate between a mod and a cosmetic. The cosmetics have the paint can, the modifiers have the double gears. So this menu shows you how many mod slots your weapon has available. And we'll get into that here in just one second, but there's one more thing that is very important on this screen, and especially with this little modifier double gear icon here. If you ever have a question of whether or not a mod can be installed in your weapon, all you have to do is take a look at the actual mods themselves. So let's take a look here at the structural brace mod. You'll notice that it does have the double gears right there, and they are glowing green. That's a good thing. That means that this mod can in fact be installed on this weapon. But if we take a look at the ergonomic grip mod, you'll notice notice that the gears right here are gray. That means that this mod cannot be installed on this weapon. So if you ever have a question about whether or not a mod can be installed on your weapon, go to the modification screen and double check the gears. If the gears are green, you're good to go. If they're gray, that means no. So like I always say, green means go, gray means no. So now let's take a look at the actual modifier slots available for these weapons. You'll notice that our quality one iron crossbow has only one mod slot available. And the same holds true for our quality two compound bow. Our quality three primitive bow, however, has two mod slots available, as does our quality four compound crossbow. Our quality five wooden bow has three mod slots available, and our quality six iron crossbow has four mod slots available. So quality one and quality Quality 2 have one mod slot available. Quality 3 and Quality 4 have two mod slots available. Quality 5 has three mod slots available. And Quality 6 has four mod slots available. Now I did feel it important to point out that it depends on the quality of the weapon and not the tier of the weapon. As you see here, our Quality 3 Primitive Bow has more mod slots than our Quality 2 Compound Bow. Now the Primitive Bow is a tier one weapon. The compound bow is a tier three weapon. So the tier doesn't matter. It's all about the quality of the weapon. Quality determines how many mod slots each weapon has available. Now let's take a look at the specific modifications that are available for archery weapons. Now since we only have two basic types of archery weapons, we have our bows and our crossbows, we're gonna take a look at each weapon type and which modifications are available for that weapon type. And we're going to start with the bows. Now it's important to point out that it does not matter the tier level of the bow. The same modifications that can go into a tier 3 can go into a tier 2 or a tier 1. So your primitive bow, your wooden bow, and your compound bow can all accept the same modification.
options. And unfortunately, there are not many modifications that can go into archery weapons. However, the ones that are available can improve your bow quite a bit. Starting with the Structural Brace mod. This modification lowers degradation by 25%. Next up, we have the Ergonomic Grip mod. This decreases your stamina usage by 10% and also increases the handling of bows by 10%. Next up, we have the Crippleum mod. This gives you a 20% chance to cripple a leg. Now, these next two mods can go into your archery weapons. However, it is one or the other. You cannot have both of these mods on a bow at the same time. First, we have the Hunter mod. This modification gives you plus 100% damage to living beings. So when you have this mod installed and you shoot a wild animal or fellow player, you will deal double damage. This mod does not work on zombies, however. And next up, we have the Rad Remover mod. This disables the regeneration ability of radiated zombies for 90 seconds. This mod is an excellent mod for later on in the game. Once you start getting a whole bunch of radiated zombies, having the ability to stop them from regenerating health is definitely a good thing. The next two mods are what I call the archery only mods. These modifications can only be installed in archery weapons, starting with the arrow rest mod. This modification improves the accuracy of your bow. And the next mod is the polymer string mod. Arrows and bolts fly quicker and further with this modification. And the last set of modifications are the cosmetic modifications. Once again, they are indicated by the little paint can icon right here. And you have your regular standard set of colors. Red, green, black, brown, pink, purple, blue, and yellow. Again, these modifications don't really do anything offensively or defensively. They merely turn your bow a different color. So go ahead and pick your favorite color and install that die into the cosmetic slot on your bow. Now let's take a little closer look at some of these modifications. We're going to start off with the archery only mod. So the polymer string mod and the arrow rest mod. Now I want you to keep a close eye on the stats right up here. We're going to start off by installing the polymer string mod. Now this modification says that arrows and bolts fly quicker and further with this modification. So when we install it, you'll notice that our projectile velocity went from 57 to 63. That means that your arrow will travel a whole lot faster. And you'll also notice that our ranged damage went up by two. The polymer string mod is definitely an excellent mod to have installed on your archery weapons. Now the next mod I want to take a look at is the arrow rest mod. Now according to the description, this is supposed to improve the accuracy of a bow. However, I really don't see any difference with the accuracy with or without this mod. For instance, let me demonstrate. So right now I have an unmodded compound bow and you can notice our crosshairs. We'll go ahead and draw back the bow and get ready to fire. Now we'll zoom in and you'll notice the crosshairs zoom in as well and zoom out. Aim, not aim. Aimed, not aim. That's without the arrow rest mod installed. Now let's go ahead and install that modification. There we go. The mod has been installed and look at our crosshairs. They look exactly the same. So we'll go ahead and draw back the bow and we will aim and again it looks exactly the same. So I'm not exactly sure if this modification does what it's says it's supposed to do or not. It looks exactly the same to me. I've tested it against zombies and I've seen no difference personally between having the arrow rest mod and not having the arrow rest mod. So I really don't see the point of, of this modification. I don't think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Or at least the difference is so negligible that you really can't tell the difference with the naked human eye. That's possible as well. However, it does give you a good boost to your ranged damage. Damage, but that's not saying anything because every modification will give you a boost to your ranged damage. So now let's talk about my ideal setup for a quality six compound bow. The polymer string mod is a definite yes. Not only does that give us the damage boost, it also gives us the projectile velocity boost as well. Very, very good modification for a bow. Now early game, I would go structural brace, ergonomic grip, and cripple them as my three 
additional mods. So let's go ahead and get those installed. So that would give us a ranged damage boost of plus 12 and a projectile velocity of plus 9. It also gives us uh, less stamina and better handling, the ability to cripple zombie jerks, and our weapon degrades at a 25% slower clip. Now for late game, I would probably swap the structural brace for a rad remover. That way we can get rid of that regenerative power that the radiated zombies have in the late stages of the game. So this right here would be my ideal setup for a late game bow user. Now before we move on and take a look at the crossbow mods, I did want to take this opportunity to say, if you find this video helpful and or enjoyable, join the Sav Nation by clicking that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. I release tutorials every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And remember to give this video a like and share it with all your friends. But now, let's get back to it. Now, let's take a look at the crossbow mods. Once again, we have a very limited selection of modifications available for the crossbows. While technically there are more mods available for the crossbow, it can be a little bit misleading. That's because a lot of these modifications clash with other mods that you can use. And we'll get into that here in just a second. But let's start taking a look at the individual mods, starting with the structural brace mod. Once again, this mod is available for the crossbow and it lowers degradation by 25%. Next up, we have the cripple mod that again gives you that 20% chance to cripple a leg. And we have the polymer string mod. Arrows and bolts fly quicker and further with this modification. And now we get into those mods that clash, like I was talking about, starting with the hunter mod. Plus 100% damage to living beings. Once again, that is only animals and fellow players. It does not work on zombies. And the rad remover mod. This disables the regeneration ability of radiated zombies for 90 seconds. Now these two mods here clash with each other, meaning you can only have one of the two on your crossbow. So it's either the hunter mod or the rad remover mod. Next up, we have the laser sight mod. This helps with aiming quickly and increases accuracy when firing from the hip. You'll notice it also adds a neat little red dot that indicates where your bolt will fly. So it is definitely an interesting modification for the crossbow. Next up, we have the weapon flashlight mod. This modification adds a light source to your crossbow. And once again, these two mods right here, the laser sight mod and the weapon flashlight mod cannot be installed on the same weapon at the same time. It's one or the other. And then we have the scope and sight mods starting with the two times scope. This modification gives you a two times zoom when aiming your weapon. And then we have the four times scope mod. This modification gives you not only a two times zoom, but also a four times zoom when aiming with your crossbow. And the last mod is the reflex sight mod. This sight is designed for fast target acquisition and improves weapon handling. Now let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these individually so I can show you the difference. We'll start off with the two times scope mod. And again, we will aim at the door. So we've got our crossbow here. This is the two times scope mod. And when you are aiming, you'll notice it zooms in, gives you a little bit closer view of your target. And now we have the four times scope mod installed. So we go ahead and aim. And now we have the two times zoom and you can also zoom in one more time. There it is. That is the four times zoom. And now we have the reflex sight mod installed. And if we aim with that, you'll notice it adds a little red dot in the middle. Actually, let me go ahead and turn around and we'll do this one against the wall here. There it is. You see the little red dot makes it a lot easier with the darker background here to, to see that. And it's a little bit closer. So you don't gain any zoom with the reflex sight, but you do gain the red dot, which indicates where your bolt will fly. Now let's go over my ideal setup for a compound crossbow. Now, if you're going to be using this weapon, you're probably going to want to go with a stealth build. So definitely use the polymer string that gives you the range damage boost, but also the projectile velocity boost. I would go with the cripple mod, the four times scope that'll give you the ability to zoom in. That way you can hit your targets a little bit farther away. And then depending on if it's early game or late game, I would probably go the structural brace mod for early game or the rad remover for later. So let's pretend this is a late game scenario and we'll throw the rad remover mod in there. That gives us us a range damage boost of plus 18, a projectile velocity increase of 13, 
plus all the extra bonuses that the individual mods themselves give you. So this would be my ideal setup for a compound crossbow late game in seven days to die. And of course, we cannot forget that yes, the compound crossbow has a cosmetic slot as well. So you can go ahead and pick your favorite color, install it into your compound crossbow, and dye it whatever color that you wish. The archery weapons in seven days to die can be extremely powerful, especially when used in a stealth build. But you can make those weapons even more powerful with the right modifications. Now, unfortunately, the mod selection for archery weapons in this game right now, it's kind of slim pickings. There aren't many modifications available for these weapons, but the ones that are available do have some excellent, excellent benefits. Now, in the course of this video, I gave you my preferred setup for both the bow and the compound crossbow, but maybe yours is a bit different. So let me know down in the comments. What mods do you prefer to use in your bow or crossbow? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did and you'd like to see more, I've created a very special playlist of equipment tutorials that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World and remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.